And I think we're demonstrating the downfall of this deck. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code ITRESOLVES10YP for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to yet another standard gameplay video. Hope you guys are having a phenomenal day today. Hopefully a good weekend, hopefully a positive time for everybody, but we're jumping in today with Jund Midrange. Now, we'll talk about that deck in a second. Before we do, I just want to remind you, please make sure you subscribe to the channel. Not only a great way to support, but a great way to get some free cards. We have a giveaway for Streets of New Capenna going on right now until the set's release. I know that's a little ways to go, but we are giving away a full draft booster box of the set. So if you want to enter, subscribing to the channel is only one way to do it. There are four free ways to do so and two bonus entries if you would like to support the channel elsewhere as well. All the details can be found on our website at resolvesmtg.com or on the video on our homepage. Also put a little annotation up above. But all right, let's talk about Jump Midrange. So Jun Midrange is generally more of a traditional standard uh, deck that we see. We, I, I at least have not seen much of it on the best of one ladder. Uh, but I thought I would try it out here today and just give it a shot, see how it does. Uh, because it really is a powerful deck. It's got a lot of answers. It can kind of do anything you need it to, uh, as Jund really should. Uh, and so for me, it's a really powerful deck that I'd just like to see if we can make it work on best of one. So to kind of talk through, we've got all the classic Jun stuff that you would like. So we've got a little bit of hand disruption with Duress, only a two of here. Not really always the most impactful card. Certainly sometimes it's very good. Even in creature heavy decks, you can usually hit like a cleric class, a paladin class, something along those lines. Uh, and so you can always usually find a target. Not all the time though. Uh, I have played this deck and not found it very successful in some scenarios, so I have it down to two, uh, which I think is important. Uh, we do have a lot of removal though. We've got Voltaic Surge dealing two damage up to four damage if we sack an artifact, which we'll get to. Uh, Flame Blessed Bolt deals two damage to a creature, creature or Planeswalker and then exiles it. So this is really good against like Luminarch Aspirants. Uh, any kind of shambling gas stuff where they like to bring it back along, uh, you know, later in the game. It's a great option to have. Uh, power word kill, just straight destroy stuff. Uh, perfect stuff for this. Uh, it doesn't hit Goldspan Dragon, which is important, um, but it is still a very powerful card, of course. Uh, a braid is in here dealing three damage to a creature or hitting an artifact, both very, very good. Uh, and then basically from here on out we've got a lot of really impactful spells so what i mean by that blood tithe harvester gives us a blood token which we can use later or we can use uh its ability to kind of kill some stuff off on the field if we need to uh we've got reckless impulse giving us some extra card draw essentially uh Volky god of lies or tybalt uh cosmic imposter both very useful cards depending on the matchup Volky very good right now because there are a lot of creatures you can hit with it uh, and then, of course, you can use its ability to copy them. Um, Callous Blood Mage, kind of an interesting one. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about this. Um, part of me wants to switch this up for like a Siege Boar Witch or something along those lines. Uh, but it does draw you a card or exile a player's graveyard or give you a 1-1. It's kind of a techie card, uh, which I like. I think the exiling a player's graveyard is actually super relevant uh, against the mono black decks. You can get rid of stuff with that could come back with Bullet on the Snow. Uh, you could get stuff out for the mono whitelist that they can bring back with the class cards. Like, there's a lot you can do here. And so I do like it. I just haven't found it really hits its mark most of the time. As a one of, it's kind of hard to. Uh, and so I'm going to keep it in for now and just give it a shot, but we'll see. Uh, we do have Briarbridge Tracker here giving us the investigate options so we can draw some extra cards. It's also just a big threat. Works great with the Harvester because we do get blood tokens. So we can freely sack the clue tokens if we need to, and we still get that plus two plus zero no matter what. So a very good card here. Uh, Fable of the Mirror Breaker, just a very powerful ability. Uh, whenever it attacks that two two, you get a treasure token. So it does help ramp you. Uh, you can discard to up to two cards to draw some cards. And then of course, you can copy stuff on the other side of this, uh, the 2-2 two -two here, Reflection of Kiyijiki. So very, very good. Uh, and then finally in the four drop slot, we've got just some big game ending kind of cards. Soren 
gonna draw us into more stuff gonna throw out some two three vampires that can fly and gain us life uh and then that minus seven can just win the game uh we've got moonveil regent which is gonna help get cards into our hand as well uh and is just a nice big threat and then finally anji here can actually uh just kind of drain life from the opponent long term so lots of really interesting stuff here lots of interesting tech this is a very teched out version of the list and very specific in the number of cards that it has for everything. Uh, so I would encourage you, if you're trying Jund, play around with it a little bit. We're going to see what works, what doesn't work here on the best of one ladder. It may not work at all, uh, but you know what? We're going to have a fun time doing it anyway, because it's a good weekend for it. We're just going to have a blast and uh, hopefully have a nice relaxing Jund time. So let's jump into the game, guys. Let's see how it goes. All right, guys, here we are for game number one. And this is a pretty easy starting point. We've got some removal. We've got the duress as well. And then, of course, Valky can come down early. We don't have a green source here, but green is definitely our least used color in the deck. Now, unfortunately, we, of course, drew a card with it. But let's see what we can do here. Hopefully, duress hits something, and it looks like it definitely will, uh, which is helpful. Um, hmm. so the question is, what do we actually want to hit here? Um, Path of Peril is annoying, but actually not the end of the world. Uh, weirdly, I think it might be Cram Session, uh, just to take them off of their turn two play. I know that sounds a bit odd, uh, and it kind of is, but it just gives them a little bit less they can do. Let's, uh, let's throw this out. I think we don't play Vulky. Uh, they just get to kill it with a Path of Peril. So it's not really a helpful play. Um, hopefully they just don't have very much here, and it looks like that might be the case. So that's good. Let's go ahead and get the Glade down. Um, I am going to go ahead and play the Tracker. Uh, just because it is a nice little threat here. Uh, they can certainly answer it with something, I'm sure. But uh, if they can't, it's just a really good card. Um, all right. First things first. I think we just attack in. Uh, let's do that. Perfect. Uh, I'm going to play this and yeah, I think we just go ahead and do this. So what we're basically making ourselves do here is uh, I'm going to pass. What we're able to do here is if they do decide to Shadow's Verdict or Invoke Despair, wow, they may not be able to. Oh, that's very bad for them. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um, well, now I'm kind of wishing we had done other things, but I think this will still work out okay. So let's go here. Uh, yeah, let's do this. So it's going to create a blood token, which is helpful. Uh, we'll go ahead and attack in here for four. Uh, again, trying to be very deliberate in the way that we are playing stuff. We do lose the harvester, but... I don't think that's the end of the world here. They are not a creature heavy deck, it seems. And so that's not really a big concern. Looks like they are very stuck on lands though, which is great for us. Um, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, okay, so. Uh, that would create a blood token. Okay, so I think we'll go ahead and play the Harvester. This is just gonna create some extra blood tokens here. If they do have a kill spell, I think they would have used it, but it looks like they're just so heavy on the uh, extra, like, sweepers and things that that may not be the case. Uh, maybe they do, and they're just waiting. Seems kind of odd, but that's fine. Um, so they do have it. Well, that's interesting. Um, okay. This still triggers, though, for us, which is great. Um... Uh, let's attack first. Yeah, I think we will play the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Um, they obviously just get to Path of Peril here if they'd like. Um, nope, they're just gonna give up. Perfect. They had no mana, so that worked out hugely in our favor. But guys, that was a beautiful, uh, sequence of turns there. That was great. I love that. Uh, well, let's jump into game two. <laughs> All right, guys, here we are for game number two. Uh, and I think we can keep this. It's a little, <clears throat> excuse me, removal heavy, but we do have the sword to get to. Uh, and the abrades are actually pretty flexible, so I'm actually okay with keeping this. Uh, we do have all three colors of mana here between all of these lands as well. Uh, and being on the draw here might not be the end of the world, depending on what we drew. It looks like that's not going to be super helpful, though. So 
we'll just pass and we'll see what happens. Uh, I did play the Glade here because it really doesn't matter if this comes into... Uh, we've got nothing on turn one. Looks like this is going to be a very annoying deck for us, though. So, uh, we do need to make sure... I think we abrade now. Uh, just so they are not cheapening up spells for the upcoming turn. So, I think we just go ahead and kill that. Um, and try and keep them on one spell a turn. If we do that for enough uh, turns back-to-back, -back, we're actually in okay shape here. Okay, wedding announcement's very good. Uh, we definitely play this on the black side. Um, Should have played the land after, but I think what we'll do is just play the harvester. Uh, I'm not too worried about this little 1-1 one -one here, so I think this makes the most sense just to get something down. Um, they obviously can't just freely attack in at least, so that's helpful. They may have like a circle of confinement or something to get this off the field, which if they do, fair enough. Like, that's cool. It looks like they do. Okay. Cool. So they're going to get this off the field, uh, which is frustrating. Not the end of the world, though. Um, they're going to get in for an attack for one. All right. Interesting. Okay. Um. Well... Really wish we had an untapped land, but we don't. Let's actually Reckless Impulse here. Wow, that's not good. Um, all right, unfortunately, we just have to pass. It looks like they're going to draw a card this turn, which is unfortunate, uh, but we just didn't have... I was hoping we'd get an untapped land here so we could follow it up with anything else, uh, but we just didn't, and so we'll have to run with it as is. Yep. Uh, so they're going to get to draw a card here. They're actually going to get to draw two, I'm assuming, because they're going to attack with both of these, uh, which, because of that wedding announcement, does allow them to draw another card. And this is the spot where Jund is going to suffer a little bit, because we just don't have enough to do everything we want to do. Uh, and so it's a little bit frustrating, I know, but that's just the reality of it. We can't do everything we'd like, so got to do the best we can. Um... So what is the move here, I guess, is the question. Uh, we can throw this out, or we can do this plus, like, an abrade, which I think I like better. Uh, so this is going to create another token here. And then we have a braid left up for one of these. Obviously, the naturalist. Mana isn't a huge concern, I don't think, at the moment. So I'm going to let this happen. Now I think I do a braid. I guess I could have waited until they played the enchantment, but again, if they don't have a four mana enchantment, then you can't really follow it up with anything anyway. Okay, they do have a circle of confinement. Uh, yeah, fair enough. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so they're gonna attack in with everything. The thing this deck does seem to be missing is just sweepers. We don't really have a lot of sweepers. Uh, actually any. Um, for good reason, this isn't the kind of deck that generally is going to like this specific version is not necessarily going to want them but uh i do think in this instance it would have been nice um let's do this and i think we wait on the power word kill um but we are going to probably just peg something here i just don't know what um there's that hollowed haunting let's see what they tag with the uh counter Looks like it's gonna be that okay um we'll go ahead and kill this here should have done that first then um i was kind of expecting them to either throw it on the companion or the uh the generous visitor itself they decided not to so uh i'm gonna take the block here we have to save ourselves as much as we can um we can discard cards i think we discard whoops these two see what we draw Wow, okay. Well, that's not great. Um, okay. So, we do this. Um, I'm gonna discard this. I think it's a land. We need land. Um, alright. Here's to hoping. Uh, we're at four, so chances are pretty slim here that we're gonna be able to take the win, but... If they're just bricking, I mean, we do gain some life in the uh, exchange here, which is kind of nice. Yeah. So, question is, can they uh, 
Oh. Okay. Now we don't gain life in the exchange, uh, which is annoying. But we don't die either. <laughs> okay. So, what's the best option here? Uh, we, if it's anything but a land, we can't keep the creature, or the, the card anyway here. Um... I'm trying to think if we activate the Den of the Bugbear just to get an extra creature. Um, but it is tapped and attacking, so that doesn't seem great. Let's Reckless Impulse. Let's see what we get. Okay, a Valky isn't actually that bad. Let's do this. We're going to have to kill Soren here, sadly. Um, but I don't think we've got much of an option. And I think the hope is just that we can get Valky down next turn. Hopefully they don't... Yeah, okay, a land's great. That's perfectly fine. <laughs> um, so we do have to block each of these separately, which is a bit frustrating because we can't kill any of them. Um, okay. Do gain some life in that process, which is helpful. Problem is we still just kind of die, don't we? So we can play this, but now we don't really have enough mana to do anything. Um, so I think we'll just do this and see what we get. <laughs> yeah. All right. Unfortunately, that is not enough. I'm just going to go ahead and concede here, guys. Sadly, couldn't get the win there. They just outpowered us pretty quickly. We were getting close to stable. We just couldn't get quite enough. And I think we're demonstrating the downfall of this deck, which we'll talk about the wrap up. Let's jump into game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Let's hope for a little bit of a better one this time around. Um, interesting hand. The the two uh, untapped, or excuse me, tap lands are a little bit frustrating, but we do have a turn one duress. I'm going to try it. We'll see how it goes. Um, very interested to see what the opponent's actually playing, and duress certainly gives us a little peek at that. Uh, anytime you can get that turn one duress feels pretty good. Um, looks like it is the equipment deck, which is going to be a bit dicey. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and turn one duress here. We should be able to hit an equipment, uh, if nothing else. Okay, Akami's Flare. That's something. Um, they're probably just going to throw the adversary down here this turn. If I had to guess. Yep. So what would we like? Most of all, I think we would like an untapped red. That would be ideal. It is not an untapped red source. Um, kind of want to hold on to that because the reality is this could kill one of their artifacts. Uh, just something to keep in mind here. Um, destroy target artifact, enchantment, or non-basic land and opponent controls. So we might be able to kill either the rabbit battery or the uh, den of the bugbear here. We are taking quite a bit of damage, which is not good. Um, all right, let's throw you out. Hmm. Really wish we could do multiple things this turn, but we just cannot. Uh, I think the play has to be to throw this out. Um, we do get the blood token, which is semi-helpful. We need a second red source, so if we can double up on these flame blessed bolts, uh, we can at least get rid of a couple things here. Curious to see where they attach this. Looks like they're going to reconfigure onto the adversary here. Uh, which we definitely block something with this adversary. Or, or excuse me, the Harvester. Um, and I think it's the Stormseeker. Stormseeker's a bigger problem in the grand scheme of things. So I definitely think we block here and hope they don't have anything. Um, okay. So they're going to use that on the adversary, I assume? Yeah. Okay. So they're gonna get damaged for in for five, which is terrifying. Um, what can we do? With that, absolutely nothing. Um, dang, man, we're so close. Uh, okay, so I think the they've got no cards in hand. All right, so let me do this. Uh, we'll discard this and kill the rabbit battery. So that gets rid of that. 
And then we can use the Flame Blessed Bolt to kill this. And then that at least gets rid of the creatures on the field, so they shouldn't be able to kill us this upcoming turn, but, I mean, you never know with this kind of deck, so we just have to hope. Um, then we'll Flame Blessed Bolt. Luckily, this does exile the adversary as well, just so they... I don't know if they could bring it back, but it just keeps that from happening. Problem is, they do have Den of the Bugbear now. So, uh, they can just activate that. This is an equip cost of four, though, thankfully, so they can't just, you know get in for that um but this is gonna put us to one yep um again we don't have the land <laughs> uh let's do this we kind of have to if we get a red source we have a shot we did not um we're just dead we just couldn't draw it. Dang. Uh, all right. Let's give it one more shot, guys. We're only at 22 minutes of recording. Let's see if we can get one more win with this. All right, guys. Here we are. We're giving this one more shot. Hopefully, we can make it work. This is a good, strong keep. So we will try this. Uh, we've got the turn one duress into plenty of removal to keep us up until we can get to that Soren. So hopefully, we can get there this time. That was a very unfortunate uh, couple of things there. Oh, hmm. This isn't ideal. Um, I think it's the commune. The trick is with the rune of might, if they have a runeforge champion, which is what they're trying to get to, they just get this from the graveyard anyway. Um, so I think the, the issue is more to deal with the, uh, the stuff coming down, not so much what they've got here. We do have both of our man lands here, which is quite nice. All right, so we're definitely just gonna do this and exile this. Um, one thing to think about too is we could have waited, I suppose, but we're trying to be a bit more proactive. The reason we could have waited is they could have attached the Rune of Might to it, in which case we could have just killed it in response. Um, but I assumed we would want to play something this upcoming turn. I just didn't know exactly what, um, and so. I felt the need to, to go ahead and get rid of that. It also just cheapens things up so they can double up on their turn. All right, so they do have all three colors of mana for this deck. This is the Naya deck, uh, which is extraordinarily good. Um, kind of an unfortunate land drop here. If it was a black source, we would have been pretty, pretty golden, uh, but we just were not. So let's see what they've got. Okay, so they're going to attack and kill. That just means we can go ahead and crack this clue pretty safely. Uh, there's a Volky. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I'm just going to pass. So we know two cards in their hand. We do have a braid up here, so that's helpful. There's the generous visitor, uh, which they probably will go ahead and try for the rune of might. Let's go ahead and abrade. This really devalues what they're doing, so that's super helpful. And uh, they basically just didn't do anything that turn. <laughs> um, let's go ahead for the Valky, just because we really don't have much else we can do. Um, looks like they don't have anything in hand, though, that's super relevant. So we just have to hope they break off the top. Kami. Okay, Kami's very good. Uh, we do have the power word kill, uh, so that we can get rid of this. Uh, but they are going to draw some cards in this process, which is not ideal. Uh, so, in particular, just one, but still a problem. Um, okay. I turn. Blood Tithe Harvester. Again, lands seem to be the big issue here, uh, which is just annoying more so than anything else. Um, we can't even do this because if we do, we don't have Power Word Kill Up. I think we just pass. Uh, wait for them to go for another rune. Oh. All right, so we actually can just wait here, see what they get, because it could just be another land into, you know, something else. There's that Runeforge champion. That is a scary, scary card, but let's see what we can do. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and kill this. So they can, I believe, play this. Oh, they've got cave. 
Oh, okay, that makes sense. So they're going to be able to get the Kami back here. I mean, it's a card. <laughs> so we could exile their graveyard. Oh, hey, look. They're going to be entering maintenance very soon. Uh, all right, so let's finish this one up pretty quick. If we don't, uh, it's all good. I am going to exile their graveyard. I'm going to get all that stuff out of there. Uh, with the Runeforge champion... Um, they can bring stuff back, so I'm kind of interested in getting rid of all that. This is going to be a bad turn for us, though. Uh, guys, if we do get interrupted here, no worries. We'll just jump to the wrap-up, so it'll work out. Uh, we've already gotten three games in, so we have a decent idea of how the deck's running. Um, unfortunately, we've got issues, but we'll talk about that. Okay, so they're going to be able to freely play all of their runes. So that's good. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, this is what this deck is made to do, uh, which is play free runes. Uh, so I assume they get the rune of speed here, uh, which is definitely the correct... Well, they've already got one, honestly. It doesn't really matter. Yep. <laughs> this is such a cool little interaction, by the way, uh, the way that this works out. So very awesome on the opponent's end. This is completely free. Uh, they just get to do this. It's going to get to attack in, and uh, yeah, I think we're probably just dead here. Get Rune of Speed on that. Yeah. Guys, I might just concede because we are running up. It's actually almost, it's a minute away from maintenance here at this point. So they definitely are going to be able to trample through as well. They've got the Rune of Might. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and concede. Unfortunately, we just can't can't deal with everything at once let's talk about the, the this deck a little bit though all right so this deck is extraordinarily powerful in my opinion uh it's it's a very very uh well tooled out deck and we did actually see the Kalos, whatever it is uh kind of do some work in that last game and exiling the opponent's graveyard against a runeforge deck that doesn't seem that bad uh it might have been better for us to just draw a card though to be honest uh but i really don't think it would have mattered Here's the problem. Uh, we don't have sweepers. We have no way to deal with mass creature decks, which on the best of one ladder is what you expect to see. It's either that or kind of the other side of it. You get a very big skew. It's kind of a spectrum. Um, and so I think the problem this runs into is that it does a pretty good job of prolonging the game because uh, you can usually handle the first couple turns. But once they start doubling up on stuff, it's very difficult to keep up on the removal end. Uh, and so you have to be very choosy about what you're killing, how you're killing it, and when you're killing it. And I think because of that, it makes it a little bit worse um, on the best of one ladder. I do think it's a good deck for traditional standard. Uh, I know I don't play any traditional standard on the channel here, guys. So I know that we're talking about a format that I don't regularly show off here, but uh this is very much a traditional standard deck in my opinion uh it's very good for that you can board in sweepers if you need to you've got options there uh whereas on the best of one you can't do that so that's just my opinion on the deck i do love the play patterns i love the techiness of the deck i love jund in general uh and so it's a really fun time to be able to play it in standard and it is i think viable enough uh if you tech it out that way that you could make this work um, but this version of the list would need a lot of work, in my opinion. Uh, all that to say, it's super fun, super sick, and Jund is awesome. Jund's always awesome. Uh, so, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe to enter the giveaway, and support the channel. Uh, and until next time, guys, we'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys.